One way we know consciousness is a product of the brain is because we can observe artifacts of our physical brain structures in our own consciousnesses. In this video, I'll point out two such artifacts that you can observe for yourself. When we are awake, we are living our lives and having experiences. When we're sleeping, the brain is preparing for the next day. But why is that even necessary? What exactly is it doing? Sometimes people think of memory as a long sequential recording of your entire history. But if memories were stored in that form, they would be very cumbersome to access. If you didn't have any kind of index, you'd have to review everything you had ever experienced to find a relevant memory. Clearly that wouldn't be very effective, especially if you needed to draw on your experiences in some kind of a hurry. But that's not how memories are stored in the brain. Your cerebrum contains approximately 200 million cortical mini-columns. Each mini-column is believed to work very much like a small generative neural network. Think ChatGPT, except with far less resources and specializing on just one topic. The inputs include a positional encoding that serves to describe the spatial, temporal, or conceptual location of the memory. That is, it specifies where, when, or what it is that you want to think about. This is the reference frame for the memory that you wish to access. And the output of the cortical mini-column is the generated content. If you're remembering something, it could be a reconstruction of an experience you once had. Or if you're dreaming or fantasizing, it could be an experience you anticipate having. Or if you're confused, it could be a memory of something that never actually occurred. Unfortunately, that happens more than we'd like to admit. One thing your brain does while you sleep is train these cortical mini-columns. The training data it uses to do that comes from two lobes called your hippocampi. Each hippocampus works very much like a replay buffer. During the day, it fills up with observations you make, and each observation is tagged with a reference frame that encodes where, when, or what is being observed. So sometimes we refer to your hippocampus as your short-term memory. Then when you sleep, it consolidates the experiences it gathered by using this data to train the relevant cortical mini-columns. This both compresses the information and makes it more indexable, although there is some loss as your experiences are moved into your long-term memory of your cerebral cortex. Now, consciousness would be a very confusing experience if your 200 million cortical mini-columns were all shouting out their generated content at the same time. So you have a lobe called the thalamus. It conducts the symphony of your thoughts. That is, it amplifies the signal from relevant cortical mini-columns and suppresses those that don't currently need attention. Since the human cerebrum is so big and has so many cortical mini-columns, that's a big task. So as an evolutionary adaptation, the thalamus connects with the prefrontal cortex and the temporal lobe to help it decide which columns need attention. This attention mechanism is the reason we have both conscious and subconscious minds. When a cortical mini-column has attention, it is part of our conscious mind. And when it doesn't, the content it generates is not fed into the hippocampi. Consequently, you don't remember it. This is why thoughts seem to pop into your mind as if they had come from some external source. You're just not aware of all the exploration that your cerebrum does to evolve and refine those thoughts. It also explains why we have what is referred to as the thread of consciousness. Since we only have one thalamus, our minds can only focus on one topic at a time. In order to multitask, we must perform the very complex dance of shifting our attention to hop back and forth among multiple cortical mini-columns. And that's a quick way to exhaust anyone's mind. Significantly, these two properties are central to the way humans experience consciousness. The wake-sleep cycle is such an important part of what we call consciousness that we find it in the very definition of consciousness itself. And the thread of consciousness is so central that we call it the thread of consciousness. It's what characterizes being awake and what many people think of as consciousness itself. Both of these properties reflect the function of identifiable structures in the brain. And neither of these properties would be expected to be a part of consciousness if it came from some external source. If consciousness came from something more fundamental than the brain, it would also not possess the wake-sleep cycle or a thread of consciousness. Thus, it would not even be recognizable as the same thing that we call consciousness. So every time you sleep and then wake up, every time you struggle to multitask, you now have two more reasons that you can observe for yourself, indicating that consciousness is a product of your physical brain.